everyone. I'm Adam Brown and this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, March 3rd. On today's show, we'll get a preview of the Academy class on Master's Paintings. And we'll take an impromptu stroll through the island tunnel to see what goes on down there on a typical afternoon. But first, we want to remind those of you who enjoy gardening that the Garden Society is meeting at 11 a.m. tomorrow in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. Larry Grove from the Calusa Bromeliad Society will speak on growing bromeliads. Come prepared to learn about these beautiful plants and have your questions answered by this knowledgeable speaker. Speaking of knowledgeable speakers, Sandy Ellers of Eagles Preserve has an academy class coming up on the work of three masters of painting, Paul Gauguin, Vincent van Gogh, and Pierre Bernard. She will be sharing inspiration from these artists that will benefit anyone working in any art form that requires a deep understanding of composition and color. So photographers, decorators, quilters, and more will benefit from attending this lecture. Sandy sat down with Terry Kolath to give us this preview. Hello everyone, I am sitting here today with Sandy Ehlers of Eagles Preserve. We're talking about a class coming up in the Academy of Lifelong Learning, and I really want to tell you more about it because the title, Master's Paintings, could not capture what's going to happen that day. Thank you for joining me, Sandy. I'm delighted to be here. We are always so grateful when Sandy Ehlers wants to share some of her background with us because you are an art appreciator, an art encourager, a painter, a teacher, and I think we're capturing all of that in this class. I wear lots of hats, I always have. <laughs> well, they're wonderful hats and you wear them beautifully. And this one, Master's Paintings, I think we're gonna be able to show um, several things to the person who comes to this class. And that is, first of all, we're gonna look at some beautiful art and put it in the context of when it happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're going to talk about three artists this time. Remember last year we talked about one, one. Matisse, um, and I wasn't quite sure what the audience was going to be like, and they were very quick, so I thought, hey, I'll toss three in this time. Yeah. So I'm gonna do three post-impressionists. It'll be Gauguin and Van Gogh and Pierre Bernard. And um, we're going to talk about their time in history, how they each became so independent and so good, and what they like to paint. And then I will have a painting. I've copied a painting by all three of them. I copied two by Bernard. And I will have those paintings there. And everyone you do, everyone you copy, you, when you're done, you have a sense of almost how that artist took their breaths. The color, the expression, looking at things in a new way. And now we're going to be able to see how that encouraged you in your journey as an artist. One of the fun things that I did for this particular class, in the third grade, my teacher was Mrs. Willis. And behind Mrs. Willis was a Gauguin's Tahitian landscape. And I studied that picture for nine months, the whole third grade. And of course, his mountains are, are not the color mountains really are. A lane, a cart lane road that he had the lanes too far apart. Uh -huh. And as a little child, I would sit there and think, well, why did he do that? As an adult, when I copied, I thought, of course, he had too much yellow there, so he just slung that over there, <laughs> you know? And um, it was really, really fun to go back and do that picture. I almost could draw it without looking at it. So just to, to um, reiterate what's going to happen, they're going to come, they're going to hear this wonderful lecture that puts these three artists in their historical perspective, mm -hmm. and they're going to view some paintings. In addition to the paintings of the artists you're talking about, they're going to view your renditions. Well, and Herb Sklar, who is just so much for the arts at Shell Point, he and Sheila are friends of ours, and Herb helps me do get all of the paintings, you know, the technical work. And he's so very good that it, that you're gonna have a whole compact, almost like, you know, going in and just doing an art history course. Sure, you're gonna see the photographs you're of this work. You're gonna be seeing this stuff. As you talk about um, it. I, I like to keep attention though. I like to talk to people and then I like to look at paintings. I, I think there's so much to learn when you're seeing and you're listening. Mm -hmm that I don't like everything going on at once, you know. 
I work it out. So by the time you leave, you've learned a lot. You've and, learned a lot. And you've seen a lot of beautiful color. And you've seen a lot of beautiful paintings. That's and... wonderful. Well, we certainly do hope that you will make time in your busy schedule to join us. I don't think you'll want to miss Master's Paintings Thursday from only 1 to 2.30 with Sandy Ehlers. As you may have already noticed, the March issue of Shell Point Life magazine features tunnel life. Now, we're not talking about coal mining, but rather mining for creative gold in some of the artistic centers of our community. The Pottery Studio, Art Studio, Photo Studio, Stained Glass Studio, the Train Room, and the Wood Shop. All of these are located in the Island Tunnel. Last week we had an idea. We grabbed one of our cameras and walked the short distance from the TV studio over to the tunnel. And, well, this is what happened. I'm Dan Phil Green here with Shell Point TV. We thought we'd try something a little different this afternoon, totally without any phone calls or letting anybody know we're coming. We thought we'd just take a walk through the tunnel and see what's going on this afternoon. <laughs> So, sir, uh, what do you think of the fabulous Shell Point train room? He's speechless. So, we have Ann Barbazette here at the uh, wonderful Shell Point train room. And, Ann, what's been going on down here today? We've been busy. We, the past month has been very busy. Today's been steady. It hasn't been big crowds like we have had the past two weeks. Last week we had 74 people come through here. Wow. Before that, 71. Today, a little lightly, but I think people are at the beach. <laughs> yes, well, finally got a little bit warmer weather. People here from Minnesota, Minneapolis, what do you call it? Minneapolis, where else? All the poor cold places. Yeah, yeah mostly, um, mostly a lot of Ohio people today. Yeah. Very, good. Very good. Well, we'll go inside and see what's going on. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. This new little eye in the sky. That little eye in the sky on the panhandle. The panhandle's way, way over there. A little hard to see from this uh, engineer station, but not anymore, thanks to the eye in the sky. And this is the lovely Phyllis Ingalls here in the train room. And Phyllis, how many people about do you think you've had this year? Well, I know last year we had over 3,000. And I think that this year we'll probably do better than that. Wow. Yeah, we're averaging uh, probably about 45 a day through here. And we're open, of course, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But everyone's having fun. People are enjoying it. It's great. Terrific. Oh, I know what I can tell you, though, about people. Um, we are now in the top 30 choice of things to see in Fort Myers. Wow. How about that? Top We're 30 in Fort Myers. That's awesome. On the internet. Check it out. We're right up there with the Shell Factory, huh? <laughs> no, we're above that. <laughs> <laughs> we're above that. <laughs> So if you haven't made it down to the fabulous Shell Point train room recently, you really need to come and check out all the new things. You know, there's always something new. I know every time I come here, I see something I've never seen before, even though I've been here more times than I can remember. So if you have any grandkids or any visiting uh, folks like that, this is the place you want to come. So here we're at the Pottery Studio. Let's go in and see what's going on in here. Well, we can see they've been a little busy here. There's some really neat things here that everybody's been making here on the display table. What are you making over here? Oh, it's, um, uh, I put a magnet the length of the oh. back of it. It goes on your refrigerator. And you can put a flower in there? Uh, and some men put them on their, uh, what do you call their metal? Like a, like, a, like a file cabinet or a toolbox? Any metal thing it'll stick to. They keep their pens in it. Oh, yeah. Or... Very nice. What are you working on? I soldered 
threw some pendants, you know. Oh, uh, pendants, I made yes. A jar, so he's oh, still got a bird still drying. Uh huh. The bottom is With a little bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this, you know. Well, very nice. So, are these, are these going to yeah. be uh, Christmas presents or something like that? Yeah, well, whatever, yes. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> I some. See I see some very happy ladies in the future who are going to be getting uh-huh. these. <laughs> very nice. And Augusta is always making all kinds of stuff. What are you working on now? Oh, I think I recognize some of these. Very nice. Thank you. Do you have any other any big shows coming up? Any like fancy stores or things like that? Uh, my new one is Naples Botanical Garden. Oh, so I'm Naples excited. Botanical Gardens. Yes. Mm, coming soon. The kiln has been running here and they've opened it up. Here's some that are, looks like in a pre-firing mode. And look at over in this one. These look like they might have their, their final glaze happening. Look at those new things, brand new. Yeah, there's always something new here. I haven't seen these before. Little kitty cat coasters, it looks like. June Lockhart, she's kind of like the mama bear around here is working on a sculpture. Mm, Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is June Lockhart's, it's St. Francis. Ah, of Assisi, there's the the bird of St. Francis there. Something Something she's doing for Iona Hope Church. Hmm, I wonder if I could ship myself to Minneapolis to see my daughter. I'm going to make a table, yes. It's going to be a um, table where you can display things. So what are you working on, Floyd? Uh, I don't know what you call that. It's a, uh, let me show you here, uh, uh, African-inspired pot. Looks like a beehive. Yeah. <laughs> this is it so far. Yeah. What, what kind of wood are you using? Uh, that's mahogany from right here. This is a special tool that uh, Phil made for me to uh, do those grooves. Okay, yeah. And uh, I, I did that as a sample there. Uh-huh. And then he used this wire to burn it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that'll be, uh, that'll be all the way from here, all the way around like that. That's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Did you cut this off already? Yeah, it's already. Hold on a second here. I'll show you. Aha. Uh-huh. So I have to uh, do this inside, and I forgot about doing that. So now I have to go back and rethink how to get this, how to get this hollowed out. Oh, okay. But that's all done in there. Oh, beautiful. It's all hollow already. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Yeah. Today is uh, Tuesday, so I started on it Thursday, I think, last week. Well, you're coming along pretty well, yeah. if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> What technique do you call this kind of bowl making? I have no idea. (laughs) I guess what we have here is a milling machine, right? This is a building machine right okay. and you're making a beautiful bowl out of the laminated wood that then you're carving in the milling machine it almost looks like turning but a completely different technique right that's a how long have you been uh, how long have you been uh, making bowls on this machine two years very good now did you do some things like this before you came to shell point oh no 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 I was an aeronautical engineer before that all right so you've never done any woodwork before all right well fantastic so it's a lot, it looks like a lot of fun. It is.
Well, there you have it. It's the Island Tunnel, full of all kinds of creative activity, fun things going on. You might just want to come and try one of them sometime. And now let's take a look at today's happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Welcome to the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley here with Caitlin Van Scoy, and we're going to tell you what's going on for activities here at Shell Point today. We start out bright and early with the Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That'll be in the Health Club on the island. At 8 o'clock, we have Pickleball at the Pickleball Court. Also at 8 o'clock, we have the Round Robin Doubles Tennis going on down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Stamp Ministry will be at the Stamp Room on the Tunnel at 8.15. And at 8.30, you'll find the Ladies Golf Association playing down at the Shell Point Golf Club. Bocce Court's going to be busy at 9 o'clock down at the Woodlands. Head on down there for some fun. 9.15, we have the Caregiver Support Group Therapy Session. That's in the conference room of the Medical Center. You do need to sign up for that one. At 9.15, the Memory Care Group will be in the conference room at Behavioral Health. Sign up is required. And then also at 9.15, we have Open Painting in the Art Studio. Match Play Mixed Doubles Tennis will be at the Tennis Courts at 9.30. Also at 9.30, we have the Women's Ministries Bible Study Group. That's at the Hospitality Room of the Village Church. Our Susie Q Boat heads out to Woody's Waterfront Restaurant in, on Pine Island at 10 o'clock. You do need to sign up. And then also at 10 o'clock, we have the Photo Gallery and Studio open down in the tunnel. Through the Bible, Bible Study Group will be gathering in the Osprey Room on the island at 10.15. And you'll find the Caregiver Support Group Therapy Session at 10.30 in the conference room of the Medical Center. At 10.30, the Memory Care Group will be in the conference room of Behavioral Health on the island. And we have 1145 LifeQuest Living Healthy class in the Osprey Room in the Resident Activity Center. Now here's Caitlin for your afternoon activities. Thank you, Bev. At 12.30, we have Mixed Progressive Bridge in the Game Room of the Woodlands. The Knitters Group will be meeting at 1.15 in the Osprey Room. And 1.15 is also the time for Shuffleboard, down at the Shuffleboard Courts. And the Rollicking Recorderists also meet at 1.15 in the Tarpon Room. 1.15 is also the time for Women's Ministries Prayer in the Hospitality Room of the Village Church. 1.30 we have a Health Connections class, Aqua Pilates Stretch in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. 1.30, we have stamp ministry meeting. Volunteers are always welcome to join them in the sable room of the Woodlands. From 2 to 4 today, the photo gallery and studio will be open for viewing and tours. 2.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2. That's in the Health Club that's currently full. The Celebration Ringers rehearsal will be meeting at 3.15 in the choir room of the Village Church. 4.15, we have another Health Connections class, Tai Chi Cha with Bev in the Health Club, and that's currently full. 6.45, we round out our day with Him Sing in the Resident Activity Center. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you right back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy Information for Tuesday. At 9.30, we continue writing your memoirs on the computer in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. At 10 o'clock, Shell Pictures will begin in the Sable Room of the Woodlands for those who have signed up. And an iPad class, Got One, Now What, will begin in the Manatee Room of the Island for those who have signed up. At 1 o'clock, we have iPad, What's in the Air, beginning in the Oak Room of the Woodlands for those who have signed up. And at 1.15, Mail Merge continues in the Technology Teaching Center on the Island. Also at 1.15, Math and Society continues in the Manatee Room on the island. And at 4.30, the Alpha course will continue in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming tomorrow. We have Intermediate Bridge, the third session, with guest instructor Susan Willoughby. We also have a Computer College Internet Prep School with Richard Nelson of Lakewood. I'd like to take just a moment to refer you to the back page of the Weekly Reminder where we have an auxiliary box. This tells you any current openings we have. It tells you when the next orientation will happen and how to sign up for it. And I'd like to extend, as always, a thank you to our Pavilion Auxiliary Volunteers. Menus for Tuesday. 
In the crystal room, the crystal platter is haddock with red cabbage and brown rice pilaf. The dinner special is build your own stir fry for thirteen ninety five, and the soup of the day is country cabbage. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a taco salad with fresh fruit for seven twenty five. The dinner special is roasted orange chicken with stuffing, green beans, almondine for eight twenty five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are seafood crepes for sixteen ninety five, or braised short ribs for eighteen ninety five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with Dr. John Stumbo. John is the president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. That's the denomination with which the Village Church is associated and also the denomination that owns uh, the Shell Point Retirement Community. So, John, welcome. It's good to have you with us. And we're here to talk actually uh, about what, what sort of feeds you. I mean, you're the president of, a, of an organization, more than an organization, a body of believers in Jesus uh, who have a lot of things in common. Uh, but to have a role like that, just to have any kind of pastoral role, you're a, you're a pastor over a lot of people, uh, and any kind of a pastoral role, we, I think the hardest part for, for us as pastors is to keep ourselves fed. Because if we're not fed, uh, we have nothing to give uh, those who are our uh, parishioners. And so what feeds your soul these days? What are, what are some of the things that uh, drive you? Uh, and what kinds of things are you reading that have been especially valuable to you? Uh, we'd love to hear that. Well, thank you for acknowledging, Pastor Andy, that the soul of the leader is essential and that we are the ones who are responsible for mm. the care of our own souls. I used to think when I was a pastor, if I take care of God's church, God's church will take care of me. That was a bad formula <laughs> because, because I was putting my own soul care onto the responsibility of others. And, and oh, yes, there's other things that people can do for me. They're encouraging, they pray for me. They, but, but when the day is done, we're responsible for the condition of our own soul, whether we're a, a lay person, pastor, or president of a nomination, whoever we are. So, and we so. see it, by the way, uh, the, the, in, in pastors can very easily dry up because they uh, they give, give, give out, give. they give and give and give, and uh, and and it's easy to get uh, preoccupied with all the events in a schedule. Uh, we end up uh, waking up after a year or two uh, wondering, you know, where are we? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why do I feel so shriveled? That's right. Uh, and, Pastor, can I just say to you that every time I meet you, it seems like you're fresh and alive, and so you must be doing something as well to, to nourish your own soul. But I commend whatever you're doing to continue on. You're absolutely right about uh, needing to do it ourselves uh, and be, be responsible for it. So tell us, what, what, uh, what feeds you these days? Well, so... Spending time in the Word is is essential for me, and to do so in a manner that allows for some reflection. I cannot say I do this every day, but but when I get past the surface reading of a passage and try to begin to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to me in that passage, um, and to, to place myself in the story or uh, in that historical situation or the poetry that's being written, as the scripture is full of so many varieties of text. Uh, but, but as I try to listen, um, I feel that the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to minister to the people of God. Absolutely. And, and so one current example would be uh, in the last months, Isaiah 40, which is a very familiar passage, verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll rise up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I've quoted that verse, known that verse for decades, but, but uh, just one passing comment in a, in a book, and I didn't even like the book that much, but <laughs> one passing comment in a book that just said that that word wait means to twist or turn. Well, I thought, now that's interesting because there's a kind of waiting that that creates strength, according to that verse. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There's a strength-giving kind of waiting, but some of the waiting that I've done through the years didn't exactly increase my strength. You know, the kind of waiting of a 
a bored teenager, you know, waiting for this uh, thing to get done. Well, that doesn't increase strength or the kind of waiting of a husband pacing back and forth, waiting for his wife to get ready for this event that we're late to, you know, and that kind of waiting doesn't I'm increase. Not, I'm not touching that one with a 10-foot <laughs> pole. <laughs> or, or the kind of waiting in a, in a, in a hospital lobby. Mm -hmm where a friend or a spouse is in surgery and, and the person in the lobby is waiting but with great anxiety, you know, oh. and, and blood pressure up. That kind of waiting doesn't increase strength. Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. There's a kind of waiting that strength renewing and the kind of waiting that that Hebrew word refers to, to twist or turn like, like the turning of a head, the craning of a neck, with expectancy to see where is the answer coming from. The Lord is coming to this situation. The Lord will enter this situation, or he's already here. And I, but, but I just haven't been able to see his presence yet. Where is the Lord at work in this situation? Expectant waiting, that kind of waiting renews our strength. Mm. Well, I've got a few unanswered prayers, or, you know, in the terms of I don't know what God's doing yet. Right in my life and prayer journal. But Join the club. Yes, exactly. We all do. But when you have a spirit of what's God going to do next, that kind of waiting renews our strength. Hmm, that's fascinating. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that I think uh, it's not just that uh, a person in your position would, would uh, profit from or even a person in my position. Uh, all believers in Jesus would, I think, uh, would relish uh, that kind of experience uh, in a devotional kind of context in which we spend time uh, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of His Word, uh, in that, with that kind of reflection. And uh, we get insights like that, don't we? Yeah. yeah, fascinating. Well, I appreciate your sharing that with us because uh, I'm, I'm gratified to know that the soul of my president <laughs> is uh, being nourished on a daily basis. And uh, that's something that I certainly uh, need to do and want to do and, and do as much as, much as I'm able to do. And I trust that uh, all of you will experience that same kind of joy that comes when the Lord meets you where you are as you spend time in the Word. And so we're delighted that, uh, that John has been here with us today and ask that you'll uh, hopefully see you soon here at the Village Church and on one of the opportunities that we have to cross paths here on the Shell Point campus. Blessings to each and every one of you. We'll see you soon. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow when we'll get some tax tips from the Legacy Foundation. And we'll see what's cooking in Ruth Duber's kitchen. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, March 3rd. I'm Adam Brown, and for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.